Technology innovation continues to be a very important sector in South Africa and a new company is involved in robotics technology. There are a few trends emerging in the technology field, internet of all things, data analytics, wearable technology, artificial intelligence and robotics, there are others as well. But these come with their own set of issues, but in the main, they have improved lives and the delivery of services. In recent times, Africa has also joined in the innovation revolution that is sweeping the world, developing technologies that respond to the continent's needs. Today, South Africa is, all, is participating in this revolution and has established itself as a formidable innovation hub and is now home to dozens of technology startups. And uh, these startups include Rionic Robotics, whose creations include low-cost anti-poaching drones, artificial intelligence robots capable of being used to locate victims in underground mining operations, and many more. The managing director of Rionic Robotics is Ryan Beach and venture capitalist Kiran Reddy. They are here to talk to us. And gentlemen, pleasure to have you with us here. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks your time. Well, you know, we had a, a chat before we started with this interview. I think I should start there. Boston Dynamics, I think the company's called. Correct, they build yeah. scary stuff. Is that what you get up to now, <laughs> right? No, no, not exactly. But it's a, there's a big misconception about robotics and, the, and it being scary. If you look at the Terminator movies, and that's not really what robotics is about. Robotics is there to help us. And artificial intelligence, um, it's actually been around since the 1940s. Um, NASA used artificial intelligence to, to manage the space shuttle program. As soon as it lands, the whole process to get it refueled, fixed up before the next launch, all of that was done by a computer. Mm. So m most modern day washing machines have got artificial intelligence in them. Um, your cell phone, a s a smartphones are a very good example of, of AI. Siri, for example, the assistant, that's all artificial intelligence. So what people are scared about is actually what you call ASI, artificial super intelligence. So Hollywood has just really messed it up for our roboticist mm, uh, guys, mm, but mm. There's, there's really nothing to be, to be well, scared of. Is, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that. Mm. Uh, maybe some other time, it depends on how I feel like tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kiran, you are supporting Ryan in his mission and his company, right? What attracted you to this company? I've always valued technology. It's one of the few things that can push an economy or a society forward quickly. Mm, mm. And um, with the advent of better battery technology and faster processing power kind of overlapping at the same time, uh, robotic expressions, um, expressions of everything in every form of our lives. Um, I thought teaming up with Ryan and trying to get a jump start on that, that coming trend was mm. a fantastic idea. And, and of course, you know, in my, in my introduction, I did mention that it's responding, some of the, the technology is responding to what we need anyway, where we are, um, mining being one such place, and we know the uh, Lily White mine tragedy that happened, that that's where technology could play a role, where people were buried underground. So you have developed some of the solutions? Yeah. So we, we, we tackle that pro problem from two sides. We can either send the robot to go rescue people, but we can in the first place keep the people out of that dangerous area by sending a machine in to do that mining. Mm. But we're not replacing jobs. We're just moving the guy out of that dangerous situation. So you'll move into a control room, we'll move to a safe area and then you'll operate the robot. Mm. So there's no job losses. We, we're purely just making you know, all the industry safer. You know? Well, tell me about some of the, uh, uh, the, the, the robotics that you have developed in recent time and the applications thereof. I mean, I like the story of the low cost the low flying drones in anti poaching, for instance. Um, and I've spoken to people who are in the in conservation the, um, and, and the rangers who've got to fight off the poachers. And they say these are heavily trained guns with uh, heavy machine guns. So, you know, so. We almost went low tech with the, um, the rhino poaching drone instead of having the big sort of American military drone, the loud buzzing one that mm. they normally weaponize. We went for a glider option, a large wingspan with flexible solar panels on the wings, mm. can stay up for quite a long time. Infrared cameras and thermal cameras on the base of the plane will keep an eye on the rhinos and we'll geotag, we'll sync the geotags on the rhinos to the computer on the plane so it would just kind of orbit above where the rhinos are, and you could pick up the approaching poachers and notify the rangers. 
It was important for us to come up with a cost-effective solution. Um, there's a lot of drone technology out there. Denel did one for, for Rhino anti-poaching, but the thing costs millions to operate per month. Mm. And how do you take that technology to a private game farm? There's no way that a private game farmer can afford a Denel drone. So that was our whole goal, was to make this technology affordable for everybody. And solutions for mining? We, we do a lot of, uh, our first very big project was a, a robotic crawler, and we can adapt that for pipeline inspections, mine inspections. We can send it in to do 3D modeling of the mine shaft or the mine tunnel. We can do sampling, it's got video recording, you can do analysis. There's, uh, um, we can, there's thousands of sen actual sensors we can put on the crawler to do different things. Mm -hmm. And, and the mining companies are aware of the work that you're doing now, are they? They are, to? yes. They are. We find we have to educate the market a yeah. lot about yeah. the new technology yes. and new products. Um, also getting over the R&D hurdle is yes. the research and development. That's quite a big, that's quite a big hurdle. But, but where are we likely to, I'm, I'm just talking about as ordinary folk now who are not involved in mining or are nowhere near the game parks, where are we likely to come across Driverless cars, most likely, <laughs> would be the yeah, first one. Well, yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, the, your, your own uh, tech, uh, homemade technologies, yeah, right? Home developed. <laughs> well, home yeah. is in South Africa. True, made. true. Yeah. They, so we do a lot of IoT projects as well, because there's a lot of cross-pollination from, from robotic technology to IoT technology. So in the home, you know, you, you'll get the motics where you actually automate your home. Uh, IoT being Internet of Things. Correct, right. yeah. Right. Which, very important that we say yes. it the way yeah, we understand it at this time. Yes. So we, we use the IoT to automate existing equipment to turn them into robots or just to capture data, send data. Um, but yeah, but just to get back to your house, you know, you can get a little vacuum that will vacuum your house on its own, you know, a little robot vacuum machine. Yeah, you're building and, such uh, we, things now? No, such. Not at the moment, so far we've just but focused... But you can adapt to whatever yeah, is there. Okay. It wouldn't be hard to... We, 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 to, I mean, we haven't, we've been going now for, for a year and a half, two mm. years, mm. so... Obviously, we haven't developed. There's still a lot in the pipeline, yes. mm. if I can put it that way, you know. But mm. currently, we're focused on industrial, mining, shipping, mm. oil and gas, pipelines, that type of stuff. But but in terms of you know, obvious, as, as I said, that there there are issues. It's great that these things are being developed, yes. but somewhere we always worry and wonder: yeah. what if they are turned into harmful machines, these? Or dangerous uh, it, 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 I can't see it happening in the next 100 years because, like Kieran said earlier, their batteries will run flat. <laughs> they'll need maintenance, they'll need spares, they need somewhere in that, even if that happens, there's, it won't happen, but even if it does happen, it won't last very long because they don't have the support structures, the infrastructure to maintain that type of... Um, and maybe they don't even have emotional connections and historical <laughs> links and... <laughs> Empathy and uh, so forth, but I, I, I had I read somewhere that one of the top companies was was developing a machine along the artificial intelligence lines that can learn by itself. It does not. It's not programmed now. Well, that the, it, you know, it's now being. An interesting fact: the medical yeah. doctor today, with all the amount of research and new scientific research that gets published weekly, as a, 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 just a GP, general purpose doctor, needs to read a thousand eight hundred hours of research a week just to stay on top with the latest diseases, latest medicines, latest information in the medical industry. So it's, it's become impossible for a medical doctor today to actually diagnose you correct. Mm. So they've, they've, they've actually developed an AI computer called Watson. Mm. Um, it, it reads all the 1,800 hours of, of reading it does weekly. And they've, they've run tests where currently doctors get about 40% of their diagnosis correct. Watson is currently running on about 70%. So 60% they get it wrong? Correct, yeah. If you look at it the yeah. other way, right? They, and they, 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 they ran that study on, on very senior doctors yeah. and, and specialists and, and they're running at about 40% accuracy. Yeah, I like the way you're putting a positive spin to it. 40% <laughs> accuracy. <laughs> I would see it the other way around and say 60% inaccuracy, which is, which is, which is concerning. But, uh, but be that as it may, I mean, it's, it's good. So you can, in time, you'll be going to a machine like a Watson that will tell you, oh, it's you again. Not just well, for a doctor. It's always be... Monday yeah. and you yeah. come to me all the time. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> yeah. there'll, always, there'll always be the human element, but now at least the doctor will have a 
computer yes. next to him, and yes. he'd be able to put in direct, uh, you know, symptoms. Sure. And and he'll, you know, it's the technology will help us. It's it's. It, yeah, but it's, anyway, I mean, the, the applications of the or, or where these can be deployed, very interesting, and I know as you've already spoken about poaching and mining, yes. there are other areas, I suppose, where we can expect uh, the technology developed by yourselves to be deployed. In which, which other areas, Adamir? We could do hull inspections, or dry docking, so we could save a company a lot of money from dry docking their ship and checking the hull for cracks. We have magnetic drones that are waterproof as well. The, the ship never actually has to come into port. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A ship hull that's clean, if you've got a hull that's permanently clean, you actually get 8% better fuel efficiency. So you can imagine how much fuel that is in a day on a big, on on a big shipping container, mm -hmm. like a container ship. Mm -hmm. I can, and again, the drones uh, can help the engineers check the power lines that go over rugged mountains yeah, to absolutely. see if there's any damage and so Just on. Just if you look at pipelines, traditionally they'd send the guy on a little trolley mm -hmm. yeah. on a rope mm -hmm. and they'd like push him down the pipe. And yeah. this, this poor guy <laughs> just held on for his poor life. Yeah. And it's dangerous. Yeah. I mean, yes. if the water comes down or whatever, yes. you know, if the road breaks, there's so many things that can go wrong. But that's how mm. humans did it up to now, and we don't have to do it anymore. Yeah. Mm. The technology is there to take all those guys out of those dangerous situations. Oh, well, I love this. Yeah. Let's see what happens in due time, and I wish you everything of the best. Thank you. And uh, thanks for coming around and sharing with us your story. Cool, thanks. Great story. Sir. Cheers. Much appreciated. I'll take you up on that uh, artificial super intelligence yes. debate so that we can can tell you now, well, not now, then, what I think will go wrong. Or get another person who will debate this issue with us. That sounds great. No, thank you very much, Kiran and Ryan, for having been our guests. Cool. That's technology for you. So much to learn about this and uh, many developments. Lawyers, I read somewhere in the United States, being replaced in some instances by the very uh, artificial intelligence robotics that can take or read so many thousands of pages and then compile a proper argument for a client. Anyway, discussion for another time. We continue with the show.